right now on Five on Your Side at 10. We begin at 10 with breaking news out of downtown St. Louis. Police say someone shot a teenager in the stomach. This was about an hour ago at Spruce and 14th Streets. The 16-year-old had to be rushed to the hospital. We don't know that teen's condition. Witnesses say the shooter ran away. Police are now investigating. We will update you as we get more information. This is the eighth kid to be shot in the city this year. Tonight, two people are dead after police say a man crashed into their car while officers were pursuing him in East St. Louis. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Brent Solomon. Moments after that crash, police sources told Five on Your Side an officer shot the suspect after he shot at them. Hours later, Illinois State Police advised media that the suspect accidentally shot himself. He's now in the hospital. New tonight, Five on Your Side's Robert Townsend is speaking with the family of one of the victims. One minute, Earl Allen says he was driving to a supermarket in Cahokia Heights, but out of the blue. It was an after police chase. Around 2 Friday afternoon, Allen saw flashing lights and fast moving police cars in hot pursuit of a man in a burgundy Ford Fusion on Bond Avenue. I'm going toward Missouri Avenue, and they almost ran me off the road. Illinois State Police say a Cahokia Heights police officer first spotted the man speeding. They say when the officer tried to catch up to him, the vehicle traveled westbound in the eastbound lanes. Police say the Burgundy Fusion hit this silver Honda Civic as that driver turned into a driveway. You just can't believe it. Audrey Crimes says her 60-year-old niece Marilyn Hill and her passenger, 73-year-old Willie Buford, were in the Honda and both died. I can't believe she gone. Like I say, that was like a sister, not a niece. Marilyn Hill had a 17-year-old daughter. Her relatives say Buford was a longtime family friend. And he was just like a brother to us. My mom looked at him as another one of her children. Police say after the crash, the suspect hopped out of the car. The crash happened just down the street from Marilyn Hill's uncle's home. After the impact, he got out and started running. And I was watching him running between houses and running between houses. And the last house he ran down, police was behind him and I heard a pop and I seen him go down. Police say he pulled out a gun and accidentally shot himself. Relatives tell me Hill lived about four miles away from the crash site. Her sister, who talked to her just on Thursday night, can't believe this happened. It's shocking, very devastating over this. People are continuously flying down Bun Avenue. Something needs to be done about it. Robert Townsend, five on your side. Tonight, a man is in jail after police say he shot and killed his neighbor. It happened around 2 this afternoon at a Midtown St. Louis apartment on Olive Street. Police say the two men got into an argument. One of them pulled out a gun and fired. The victim died at the hospital. We don't know either man's identity. Well, it's a quiet night in St. Louis, but there are some storms in our south. We're taking a live look now at a rainy look in Arnold. Meteorologist Jim Castillo now with your weather first forecast. Yeah, hi Brent. So uh, right along Interstate 44, we've seen some rain showers. Then you get down to around Crawford County. A couple of uh, lightning strikes down there and maybe even some penny sized hail. No severe weather yet, but can't really rule out an isolated severe cell in our southern counties. Let's zoom in a little bit. And you can see Steelville has had a couple of thunder showers move through, even Potosi all the way to southern portions of Jefferson County. Some downpours, maybe a rumble of thunder in there. And then even around Arnold and also Melville and really close to the city of St. Louis, a few showers. Belleville to Waterloo, a couple of downpours there. And there it is, severe weather chances tonight in green and mainly in a line from around Steelville to, to Centralia, Illinois, southward. Main threats will be hail and that chance of seeing some strong wind gusts. There's the future cast. Uh, we'll take a look at the radar again coming up in main weather in just a few minutes. All right, Jim, we'll see you then. Tonight, a former St. Louis alderman is back in St. Louis after serving time in federal prison. Jeffrey Boyd was sentenced to three years after he admitted to accepting bribes from a local businessman back in 2022. On February 1st, Boyd was transferred from a Texas federal prison to a local halfway house. 
these aim to facilitate the trans uh, the transition of individuals from you know, incarceration back into the community by private by providing structured supervised environments for people who are being released from prison. After serving a year, it's not clear why Boyd's sentence was shortened. It's possible he got credit for participating in a substance abuse program. He is slated to be released come July. Two teens are helping area families impacted by radioactive waste. Tonight, Caroline Pingle and Elise Norman organize a fundraiser by screening the movie The Incredibles at the Emerson YMCA in Ferguson. Last year, the pair turned a school assignment about the Coldwater Creek into a plea for environmental issues to be addressed. They have since established the St. Louis Nuclear Radiation Initiative, trying to find a solution. We could not ignore all of this issues going on with people being diagnosed with cancers and autoimmune diseases. We wanted to implement a change, especially with living so close to this and never being aware of what was going on when we were growing up. Proceeds from tonight will help cover medical costs of families impacted by radioactive waste dumped in North County. Well, it's the St. Louis summer soundtrack, Buzzing Cicadas. This year, a 13-year cicada brood and a 17-year cicada brood will emerge at the same time in the Midwest. And that hasn't happened since the year 1803. But will the double brood emerge in our region? Five on your size and all red verify. There is no disputing these two cicada broods coming out at the same time is a once in a lifetime event. The last time it happened, Thomas Jefferson was president. Online, you might see headlines like simultaneous explosion and cicada apocalypse. But is it true this double brood emergence means double the bugs for the St. Louis region? Let's verify. Our sources, Katie Dana, entomologist with the Illinois Natural History Survey, and Robbie Deerhoff, forest entomologist for the Missouri Department of Conservation and cicadasafari.org. Two cicada broods will emerge from the ground in mid-May and hang around for about six weeks. Brood 13, that lives on a 17-year cycle, is represented by the blue dots. And brood 19, which lives on a 13-year cycle, is represented by the red dots. Experts say our region will only see the 13-year cicada. They do come out at the same time, but their geographic range doesn't overlap. So we won't have double the cicadas in one area. But that one brood will still bring a lot of bugs. Experts say it's possible 100 cicadas can emerge out of a single square yard. With the sheer number of cicadas that are emerging, it's going to be much, much louder. And once the 13-year brood finishes mating and dies off in late June, our annual cicadas, the ones we listen to every summer, will then emerge. They'll inhabit the trees until October. We can verify no. Two cicada broods will not emerge at the same time in the St. Louis region. Scientists say cicadas are harmless and provide a valuable food source for other animals. One of our Verify experts even said she's anxious to try out cicada recipes with her family this year. The only warning from our experts, if you want to plant a new tree this spring, you might want to hold off until the fall. I'm Ann Allred, five on your side. So what can Ann verify for you? Just email ksdverify at ksdk.com. Well, let the good times roll. St. Louis is kicking off the last weekend of Mardi Gras. We'll get you ready for the big celebration.